about two years ago, we uh, decided that we would put our money where our mouth is. And instead of just talking about stopping deforestation and trying reforestation and educating about the challenges that are faced there with disappearing species, that we would actually create a forest of threatened species and try to take it off that list. And we had no idea how to do this. So and we were lucky that we knew somebody, uh, a scientist named Dr. Sylvia Ziller, who lives just one state away, a few hours away. And she's a um, reforestation specialist. She's an invasive species specialist. Um, she's truly one of the leading um, minds in Brazilian uh, environmental policy. And she first came to our property to tell us how to plant trees and save species from extinction, right? And as she's driving onto the property for the first time with our partner, Tois, who is her old friend, she's looking at the line of palm trees that are, that are on the side of the road. And she says, who's the idiot who planted these Australian palm trees on, these, on this Brazilian property? And the answer was, well, <laughs> the, the trees, you know, they were, I thought it was a good idea. You know, they were available. I could afford them. You know, we plant the trees. Why not? And she said, oh, you're talking about this 100-year plan and you, you don't understand. You bring invasive species into your property. You don't get to 100 years. So before we could plant trees, she said, we got to fix up your property. And we thought we were pretty hot shots when it came to environmentalists already. But it turned out we had so many invasive species on our property. There were the Australian palm trees. There was Asian wild ginger. There were Japanese cherry trees and all these things. We said, but they're pretty. And she said, yeah, here's, here's what's going to happen. You have a jaca tree here and you depend on the jaca fruit for the birds to come and the birds are the ones who eat the insects. And because you have birds, you don't need insecticides, which allows you to be organic certified. Now, these two things, this wild ginger you have here is going to overtake this jaca tree. And in 10 years, you won't have a jaca tree and the birds won't come. And then you'll have insects and then you won't be organic anymore and then you'll go belly up because you forgot about the wild ginger that's invasive or the buffalo uh, um, water or something or other. And so uh, it all kind of gets put in perspective. And Sylvia is the only environmentalist I know who travels with a chainsaw in her trunk because sometimes doing the right thing is counterintuitive. You, sometimes you have to cut things down in order to rebuild them. And we, we learned that the hard way. And I think for leaders, they don't have to be running a, a distillery, right, in Brazil to have that, to need that ability, right, to look at the big picture and go, I think I'm doing it right. But if I take a step back and I realize that, look, this isn't good for the environment or sustainability is part of our mission, right, then we're going to have to suffer some painful moments right now in order for that really to pay off. 